Hello, friends, dear friends of our podcast. Today we have a special guest. We have uh, here Ambassador Adrian Zuckerman, U.S. Ambassador to Romania from 2019 to 2021, and a very good friend of Romania, a Romanian, an American. And the first question is, Ambassador, what makes America the best friend of Romania? It's, of course, obvious, but I always love to hear your answers on, on this. Yeah. Uh, the first answer, Kodrin, is that, that it's a great pleasure and honor for me to be here with you today. Uh, so thank you very much for having me uh, on your program today. Uh, Romania and, and the United States enjoy a very, very special relationship. Uh, there are many, many Romanians in the United States, throughout the United States, from the East Coast to the West Coast, from the South to the North. Uh, the majority of people in Romania speak English and uh, pretty good English. Uh, uh, we share common values in business, democracy, uh, uh, and societal uh, values so that uh, we are able to move forward together. And I am very uh, pleased and very happy about the close relationship. And I think the relationship ha has been good for a very long time and continues to improve uh, as we move forward. And you decided to remain here uh, after your mandate as an ambassador. And probably you have reasons for this. I mean, you really believe in Romania. Uh, so I find I find daily uh, many young people or, uh, you know, uh, middle-aged people who are in the peak of their adult life or professional life, sometimes they are negative about our chances in Europe, in, you know, in the world. But you believe in us. You believe in our chances. Why? First of all, I... I when you say I remain here, I don't remain here. I go back and forth between yeah. Romania and, United States. and the United States. You remain close I, to us. I have uh, a home in, in the U.S. Uh, I go back and forth to New York and Washington and Florida and other parts of the U.S. on a regular basis. Uh, but I'm a strong believer in Romania. I was born in Romania. I left at a young age with my parents. We emigrated to the United States. And I truly believe that the United States is Romania's best friend. I, I think Romania has a pivotal role in European security, protecting the eastern flank of Europe from uh, Russian malign aggression. I think Romania uh, security forces, intelligence, and military are very closely aligned with United States military and intelligence forces. Uh, I think Romania is a pivotal ally in NATO and the EU, and I think it has a great potential. Unfortunately, uh, Romania has not made as much progress as some of the other uh, Eastern European countries that have shed communism 34 years ago. Uh, Poland is an example. I think Poland is much further ahead in terms of its business evolution than Romania. And there are reasons for that. I think Romania has not fully overcome the communist thoughts from 34 years ago, even though it got rid of the communist regime. Uh, but I think that is changing slowly. Uh, I think that uh, the private uh, industry, private economy, open markets have to be uh, uh, developed more in Romania. And the biggest problem that I see in Romania and with Romania businesses is government ownership of various entities. And I've spoken publicly about this uh, since I was the ambassador. Uh, there's some 1,400 companies 
uh, that are owned by the state, and none of them are doing well. The majority of these companies are losing money. The companies that do make some money do not make money, the profits they should be making uh, with similarly situated companies. And it's a huge problem. It's a drag on Romania. The, the recent uh, fiscal problems, the budget gaps, in my opinion, are completely due to the problems of the state-owned companies which are losing money. They are filled with, uh, uh, in my opinion, with political allies of various people, uh, friends, families, uh, people that do not understand how to run businesses. These businesses should either be shut down or privatized, and you need to move forward. As an example, the railroads here, all the profits are taken out, whatever profits they have, are taken out by the government. There's no money that has been reinvested in terms of capital expenditures to improve uh, the the railroads, the the tracks. It's it's a mess. Uh, some of the private uh, uh, rail companies are doing much better now. They've started investing in some new. Uh, rail cars, but you need to improve the whole rail infrastructure. Same thing with the roads, same thing with other companies. Many projects are not moving forward because of this problem. Maybe a solution could be moving from state-owned companies to public-owned companies like companies owned by the citizens. This is another, this is part of the private economy. This should be more and, you know, governed by uh, private management with boards, with private management, with efficient governance and uh, reinvesting profit. Maybe citizens could become part of the economy this way, not not wait for social no. benefits. You're, you're 100 percent right, because if you look at the United States stock market, at the British stock markets, at the Dutch stock markets, the people who invest in that are companies and individuals. So there's corporate responsibilities. If executives and boards and other people do not perform well, if the company is not doing well, those people are fired. There is no accountability and responsibility in terms of, of uh, government owned companies. There's no accountability. And the people that are put in place to run these companies, uh, uh, in all candor, have no clue what they're doing. Uh, they recently put, uh, there's somebody at Tarom, which lost, uh, which is the Romanian national airline. They lost uh, 100 million euros uh, this past year. They have somebody who used to sell paint, who apparently is the chairman of Tarom. It's, an, it's incredible. Uh, in my opinion, it's criminal. Can we switch, can we move forward to a, a human resources culture based on a better education, based on foresight, based on people who see Romania and the main cities with skycrapers, with, with high-speed trains and all the you know tools of a develop, developed infrastructure? Because I think... When we discussed uh, in the past, you told me that one of the greatest capital of Romania is, is uh, the people of Romania, the Romanians. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're 100% right. I think the Romanian people are very capable, very able. Uh, they're very educated. I think Romania uh, is a microcosm of the United States. They have great natural resources, forests, oil, gas, uh, minerals, uh, uh, industries that, if run properly, could be very successful. But a government cannot run a business. Uh, a government can do some things very well, like an army, like a police, like a fire department, but it cannot run an entrepreneurial business. They're not set up to do that. It's not just Romania. It's anywhere in the world. And a private free market economy would uh, create an absolute boom in Romania. And in order to do that, I, I think 
theoretically, there's some very simple things to do. Reduce regulations, reduce taxes, shut down, stop giving money to the government-owned entities that are losing money. They'll either disappear, uh, they'll file for bankruptcy, or they will be sold to somebody that can do that business better. Because those government-owned entities not only lose money because the government is given the money to make the payroll to do whatever they're doing, they're wasting public monies in my opinion, but they also keep competing companies out of that market because who can compete with the government? You can't because no matter how much money those people lose, the government's going to give them more money. So you cannot compete. They have to be shut down. Either let them go bankrupt or sell them, or do whatever you're going to do, open up the market for businesses. And I think Romania will be one of the most prosperous countries in uh, in Europe, in my opinion. It's got the most natural resources, uh, a very talented pool of people, uh, and a tremendously bright future if certain simple things were put in place. And some of those those things could be put in place by education, with education. Um, even with early education, I think uh, a person is uh, being created mostly in those years of early education with some certain values, uh, with, with some uh, certain habits. And also, after that, Um, maybe introducing things like financial education in high school, uh, because sometimes people should know they should produce the resources necessary for living. They should know that the private career maybe is the first option, not the second option after being hired by the state. Uh, and um, maybe, you know, uh, a certain value of loyalty should be higher in the Romanian society because in the HR market, in what I see in um, within between professionals, they move from one company to another, from one employer to another for a few bucks extra, for a few hundreds dollars extra, which is a shame probably, uh, which doesn't happen everywhere. Uh, and the culture of loyalty maybe should expand to the entire society. And we, as a country, could be more loyal to simple and healthy dreams and objectives. You have to earn and deserve loyalty. The problem in Romania, again, is the mentality from the communist years, which is still pervasive in many uh, political parties and in many people in government. We have to get beyond that. Uh, Romania, about 15 years ago, had about 22 million people. I am told right now there's something around 16 or 17 million people in Romania. And it's the difference is people have emigrated. I speak to people on the street. I speak to taxi drivers, car drivers, other people. Nine out of 10 of them say, if I could leave tomorrow, I would leave because they have no future, no hope. They they find it hard to advance, to get promoted. Uh, they're worried about education for their children. They're worried about the health system, which is uh, the government-run health system is a disaster. Uh, there have been no new hospitals built in 30, 40, 50 years. The ones that exist are antiquated. Uh, professionals leave, uh, it, it doesn't need to be that way. People have to understand that the communist system collapsed because it did not work. And the biggest problem with the communist system was that they owned and tried to control private businesses and the economy. It does not work. The private sector has created more wealth than any other system anywhere in the world uh, and every everybody no matter what the russians or the chinese the iranians or anybody else says about america 
the reason the United States has become so prosperous and so democratic is that they embraced the private economy and private business and people can speak their mind. And if that were to be done here, I say again, Romania would be one of the most prosperous countries in Europe. This is a very, thank you so much for this idea. This is a very important, significant idea because people look at uh, 2024 uh, with hope, uh, wondering what will be, how the elections will influence the new cycle, the new 2024, 2028 or 29. Uh, how will the Romanian elections for European Parliament, local elections, general elections, presidential elections, what will happen in the world? Because half of the world is having elections right now uh, and people also analyze who will win uh, the elections, who might win elections in the United States. Uh, but what I think is important is what you said, not, not the person who wins mostly, but the mentality of focusing on the private economy, on, uh, on the private sector, on, on making profit, on making a sustainable uh, working within a framework of, with a sustainable health system, uh, health insurance system. This is, those are the pillars of, uh, of, uh, you're, of the capitalism. You're, you're completely correct. And, and I get very frustrated and I've spoken publicly about this before. And I've heard many politicians say here, well, we can't do anything this year because it's an election year. And I say, that's a mistake. This is the year, it's exactly the opposite because this is the year when you should do something. You should have a vision. There is no new vision here. You need a vision for private industry, for growth, for development. Uh, you know, pr price ceilings do not work. I would have thought the government here would have learned that lesson six months ago or a year ago when they tried to put the price controls on firewood because people, you know, which frankly is an embarrassment in my opinion because when I, when I was here as a child, we used to heat our home with firewood because there was nothing else other than the communists. It was, it was horrible, assuming you could find firewood. And they decided to, to put price controls of firewood, uh, ceilings, and guess what? It didn't work. People said, we're not selling it for that price, goodbye. So they had to undo it. Now they come back to put the price controls on a variety of other things. And guess what? That hasn't worked. Food prices have increased. The economy is gonna decrease. Higher taxes do not work. More regulations do not work. Uh, regulations need to be reduced. Taxes need to be reduced. You have to let the private sector go free and prosper and will make Romania prosper as well if, if you can do that. An example for is the tech sector in Romania, which up until recently had very few regulations on it and it became one of the best uh, parts of the Romanian economy where people from throughout Europe came to Romania to work in the technology sector. Now they've increased prices, uh, uh, they've increased taxes, excuse me, on the tech sector, on its employees, they've removed some uh, benefits for them. Uh, I hope it doesn't destroy the sector. Uh, compare that to restrictions and very, very high taxes on gas and oil produ uh, production. Romania has the biggest oil uh, uh, and gas fields in the Black Sea. Only one company in the last 14 or 15 years has managed to extract gas from the Black Sea, Black Sea oil and gas. Why is that? Because of the very high taxes, very high regulation, Chevron left, Exxon left, uh, nobody else is producing and the taxes that are imposed on Black Sea oil and gas and the taxes that will be imposed on others are frankly astronomical. And there's no reason for that. It's, it's foolishness. It keeps production low, 
that keeps companies from entering and extracting gas, increasing oil production. And there are, there are still many oil uh, producing fields uh, that can be developed. Similarly, uh, many uh, mineral mines have been shut down for no good apparent reason. Uh, it's, it's, it's a terrible situation. But there are solutions. I met uh, with a friend who lives in Brussels, and although we have all those issues, and he is aware about because he works, I think, in a European Commission, European Union institution, he told me that uh, some things look better. For example, in Bucharest, the, the uh, office office area, the corporate area, there are new office buildings, that new malls, new infrastructure that give. Bucharest, a new face. Uh, we look European. Uh, Ambassador, can Bucharest, could Bucharest become the New York of Eastern Europe? In theory, of course, but you need to do many other things before that happens. You need foreign investment. You need stability. Uh, the corruption level is still extraordinarily high here. Uh, the taxes are increasing for no good reason. Uh, the legal system here needs to be independent. People have to have faith in the legal system. And while you have investments from foreign companies, they're not from a sufficient number of foreign companies and not sufficiently high in value uh, to make substantial differences. And I don't mean to sound negative because there's been improvement, but there's been improvement very slowly. If you look at Poland, they're 15, 20 years ahead of Romania. Uh, there's no reason for that. We have to get ahead of this thing. Romania has to de-Russify. There's tremendous Russian influence and propaganda here. There's tremendous Chinese uh, uh, influence and propaganda here. There's nothing positive either about Russia or China. Romania has to get beyond that. Romania could be a very powerful economic power if it gets beyond these issues. And it's moving in that direction, but very slowly. And that's why people are still leaving. There's a net uh, outflow of people from Romania because of these very issues. Where do they live? Spain, Italy still? Yes. Uh, Canada. The, the UK. Yeah. UK. There's approximately a million Romanians. In Italy, I think there's probably a little more than a million. In Western Europe, in the United States, I think there's over 2 million Romanians. Uh, they, they go everywhere. Uh, they go to France. The, Romania loses uh, professional people, doctors, engineers. And it's not so much for additional salary, but it's for the future of their children. Schools, hospitals have to be improved. Health system. The health system, the educational system has to be improved. Romania has some very good universities like Babes Boya, like the University of Bucharest, others, Politecnica, but there need to be others. Uh, the, the grade schools, the, the uh, high schools have to be improved. You hear stories, uh, horrific stories, about uh, schools where the buildings are collapsing, where there's no bathrooms, where there's no... It's terrible. It shouldn't be that way. Can, could the directors of schools, the school directors, school principals, become uh, 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 pioneers of change for the education system or the entire how how should we plan the change of the educational system where should we start it of all, course from the early education but after that uh, that's a very good question i think uh, the answer is not all that simple but it comes back in my opinion to a fundamental mindset where you have to have money for these things you have to have, and the money comes from increased business development. 
for example, uh, Romania should have it stopped its film business. It had incentives and uh, uh, to bring movie uh, producing companies here. They stopped those incentives for reasons I don't understand. They have to appeal to private industry to come into Romania. The government is not doing that. Uh, the methods they're using are wrong. Once you get a vibrant industry, the schools will flow from that because when the economy rises, it will rise everything else with it. Uh, I mentioned earlier the corruption. There was recently a case in Vaslui where one of the local barons was caught with hundreds of thousands of euros in his car trunk. What's happened? Nothing's really changed there. Uh, I am sure, unfortunately, he's not the only one. There was a case uh, which was tragic of nursing homes for elderly people, disabled people throughout Bucharest and throughout Romania, where these people were kept in horrific conditions. They were crying for help and allegedly inspected by various government departments. The prime minister said that he's going to fix the problem. Nothing's happened. They went, they inspected. I, I haven't heard of anybody going to jail. Some people, some investigations. But many people are back in government who was responsible. Where's the change? It's the same government looking at the same problem. With time, people forget about the scandal and nothing happens. It's wrong. And two, we have too many. We, th we say that we don't have uh, the necessary professionals in the economy. We are hiring people who come from other countries. We do, okay, it's good, but we forget that we still have very many people in the public sector, too many people in the public sector, that maybe the public sector could be more agile and could work with one third of the current employees and everybody else could become eligible for the private sector. Let's not import I, workforce. I, I think you're 100% correct. If you look at the 16 or 17 million people that are in Romania today, something between four and five million people work in the private sector. Uh, there's one to two million in government, if you add in army, police, uh, the local, you get up to three or four, uh, and the state-owned companies, three, four million government or government directly or indirectly, and then the others don't work. So the reality is you have approximately four and a half or five million people that are supporting 16 or 17 million people through their work. How long can that last? It's not a sustainable system. And that's why there's such problems and deficiencies with the budget. And once you start raising taxes and putting more regulations, uh, it's a downward spiral, which is not going to end well. And the economic signs now are negative. The economy is going to get worse. Prices are going up. Uh, the way to fix that is reduce taxes, encourage the private sector, get rid of the government-owned businesses, and let businesses flourish, let people flourish, and they will take care of the rest. The, the government doesn't have to do very much. And maybe you uh, maybe also encourage individuals to invest in the, after moving the government-owned companies to state uh, to public owned, from state owned companies to public owned companies which means uh, owned by individuals who have That's shares true. and companies who have shares let's encourage a culture of people investing in, in the stock market and also to be, to become investor to become entrepreneur to become uh, every romanian who works who, who is well educated knows english it's a pity that we still have parents of my generation who say that uh, young parents who say that they would prefer a long-term uh, career for their children in the public sector. This is because sometimes the, pub the wages in the public sector are over the wages, the initial wages in the private sector, which is totally 
absurd. It's crazy. Yeah, crazy. And because we still have mentality from communism where people were uh, empl employed by, by the state. And I heard, for example, people who work in very nice, very well-known uh, private companies after working in the private sector, after having in the, in the public sector, after having a public career hired by multinational companies, they don't say the name of the company. They talk with their relatives and they are ashamed they work in a private company. They say instead of saying I work in that, I don't know, any a brand, I wouldn't say it here, very big, huge global company, they say, I work in a private company. I'm not at the, that ministry anymore. But you should be proud, man. You should be proud I... that you moved to the private sector and you are a productive part of the society. Instead, they say it lower, on a lower case. Oh, yeah. Why? I, I don't understand that. It's a remnant of, uh, of uh, communist thought which uh, destroyed generations of Romanians, destroyed generations of Eastern European. It's a plague, it's a cancer. Uh, what the communists did here is criminal, in my opinion. Uh, sadly, many of those people have still not been brought to justice, uh, and they should have been. Um, but you have to look forward, and you have to move forward. You, I think... The switch to the private sector is the only way to move Romania forward. All these companies that lose money have to be uh, terminated, either cut off their government-supplied money, or if they have any value whatsoever, which most do not, they should be sold. Uh, uh, recently, they privatized, I think, 20% of Hydroelectrica, which has a value if you prorate it to the rest of the company values, Hydroelectrica at something $9 billion, $10 billion, a very high price. That would more than fill the budget gap, it would produce revenues, it would put professional management in, it would double, triple the revenues of the company. Why is that not being done? Because you have political appointees which seek political favors, which do God knows what they do. It is not being run uh, in, in an efficient way uh, or a business-like way. This is inherited. And that's the problem. It's not just hydroelectric. It's, it's every state-owned company in Romania. Even the ones that make money, do, they do not make money at the level they should be making. They're mismanaged. Uh, it's a huge problem. This is inherited from the communism. Uh, the fact in communism, as you well know, the political class, the communist party, uh, somehow created uh, its own elite uh, with That's privileges right. and uh, no equality, nothing regarding those principles they used to talk about. And uh, this remained as a background voice and vision for the current adult people who still want to become um, known to become wealthy using politics. So less about the uh, you know public uh, the the public interest, more about the self interest. Unfortunately. Um, you know, one of the issues, if I may interrupt yeah. you for a second, yeah, forgive please. me, but everybody talks, oh, if we fix tax collection and uh, uh, we, we will solve the budget problem. Okay, why hasn't the tax department enough and the other collection uh, entities been digitalized? For 15 million people, 16, 17 million people, it's not that hard to have computerized documents. Nobody wants to do it because there is theft, corruption on an immense scale. It's as simple as that. Uh, when I was ambassador, I remember discussions about that, and everybody said, yes, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, nothing's been done. Uh, there you have local barons throughout Romania that uh, 
just like the fellow who was caught with hundreds of thousands of dollars in his trunk to to uh, apparently to allow some uh, road to to be built or something like that. Uh, my belief is that it happens uh, in many many places throughout Romania, and it's holding Romania back because it, you cannot grow when you have these kinds of issues. Indeed. Uh, I will tell you a story of today. I met a company, big company wanted to, who wants to come to Romania to create a hub here. And they told, they asked about the conditions. They asked us, uh, because we are in a public affairs industry, what I was, it is, the, it is the political environment, the fiscal environment, and so on. Uh, the labor tax says, because they really thought that Romania is, and it is, Romania has a chance to, to, to be a hub for many, many important companies. Um, of course, we encourage them. But uh, also, I was thinking that in the next, probably, government relations campaign, from the, I have more than 12, 15 years of experience in this field, sometimes when we work for a, big company providing a public affairs campaign and engage with the stakeholders, with the public stakeholders. Sometimes um, we meet people who are who understand that there is a need for investors. There is, uh, we should treat them with respect and they should meet with us uh, in order to understand their view and to somehow attract them to come to Romania. But sometimes we have public officials who tell us we are who we brought Smithfield Ford here uh, since 2007 uh, and other big investors. They tell us why should we meet with uh, with investors? Why me as a public official should put you guys on an agenda? They treat this thing like they're doing a favor to us or the investor instead of thinking of themselves as a uh, you know uh, as they are in the public service and this is not you know still 2024 things are happening people look at themselves as barons as local uh, you know owners of the land or central <laughs> central owners right. of, the, of the public administration you don't own that office. You are in the public office. It, it's a responsibility. It's not a chair. Yeah. It's not a throne. Is it? Is it yeah. right? Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I see that. I, I can't specifically uh, comment on that. Then, other than the things that have been public that I have seen. Recently, we saw a fire in, in the mountains at a resort where the fire codes were not respected. How could you open a hotel-type uh, accommodation, public accommodation, without having the appropriate uh, fire prevention, smoke detectors? Uh, again, it's criminal. Who did what? I don't know. I don't want to cast aspersions on something that's pending, but obviously it's not correct. How they got to that point is not correct. You have the fire at the discotheque uh, collective a uh, number of years ago. Same thing. How did that happen? Uh, these things happen when you don't have uh, a strong law and order, predictable business environment where people cut corners because otherwise they're being held up. It's well known. There was a case, I forgot what city was in, where it was alleged that somebody paid the mayor or hospital director thousands of euros to get a relative a job as a doctor. It, it is outrageous. These things should not be happening uh, in this country. And the, there's always a new case that comes up uh, that you hear about. Uh, like this and it should not be it's holding the economy back uh, uh, the prime minister he's uh, said he's going to clean up uh, these situations uh, I hope he does uh, this cannot stand uh, again the case in Vaslui uh, I'm certain that 
man is not the only one. That's the only thing I'm certain about. Nothing else has happened. And these things have to happen before there's a problem, before there's a fire, before there's a disaster, before uh, somebody gets caught with the money. Uh, there has to be law and order in the United States to induce companies to come from one state to the other or one city to another. They have uh, development entities by either uh, run by the city governments, the state governments, and what they do is they create plans to incentivize companies to come to their city or their state. They give them loan guarantees, reduce taxes, help uh, 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 hiring people, uh, a variety of different benefits, short-term and long-term, to get businesses to come there. There's nothing like that in Romania. In Romania, they say, well, if somebody's interested, we'll talk to them. But nobody's going to be interested. Nobody's going to waste two, three years to, to negotiate, to buy a piece of land, to build a factory. Nobody's going to do it. Uh, and that's the problem. Uh, it's attracting free market investment where people need predictability and stability. And they need to know that the conditions there are stable for the long term because nobody is going to invest a substantial amount of money if they're not sure what's going to happen in six months or a year. And nobody is going to uh, invest money not knowing what the government can help them with, not help them with. And so there has to be a plan to attract people to come here. Because if you ask anybody, anybody in the government, why should somebody who's interested in doing business in Europe, for example, open up a business in Romania as opposed to somewhere else? Well, we have good people. Yes, of course, you have good people, smart people, educated people. A lot of other countries in Europe have the same thing. Why Romania? What are the benefits? Well, we could discuss it. What do you want? It's too late. I'm told it takes two, three, four years just to buy a piece of land, just to get permits to build something. It it's not possible. Nobody is going to come here in those conditions. Indeed. And uh, also you told us about um, the danger uh, coming from some communist countries like China or Russia. And there is also a communism that is on the Internet because now uh, we have no expert opinions. Everybody is on Internet is a voice. That's right. That's sometimes good because you have freedom of speech and uh, expression and you can see lots of opinions but it's open to manipulation it's uh, sometimes a channel a, open for manipulation it's a very very difficult and fine line between free speech if you or i or somebody else as an individual want to speak out on an issue uh, i feel very strongly that we should have the opportunity to speak out regardless of whether the majority of people like what we have to say, dislike what we have to say, but we should have the right to express our views regardless of how uh, uh, popular or unpopular they are. However, when you have a state like Russia, China, which are totalitarian, and I'll say this, I think they're criminal governments, I think Putin's a criminal, Xi Jinping is a criminal. They've imprisoned and killed more people in Russia and China than anywhere else in the world. Uh, they, those states should not have the opportunity to transmit their propaganda through uh, uh, public channels. A, a very good example of that is TikTok. It's, it's an outrageous... Uh, uh, venue that's become very popular but it's manipulated by the uh, communist chinese government uh, in two ways one is to advance and popularize chinese thought and try to make people believe china is good 
Meanwhile, they have over a million Uyghurs in concentration camps. They have Tibetans that they're torturing. People disappear. Uh, it's a horrific uh, government. Uh, and yet they have propaganda on TikTok, which emphasizes the good Chinese, uh, whatever the Chinese government wants you to see. It minimizes the bad. But in addition to that, uh, TikTok uh, can infiltrate, put viruses on your phone or tablet or whatever else you're using. Uh, so it creates a very big problem. Many, uh, the EU, uh, other countries has banned it on government-owned uh, 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 tablets and phones and things of that nature. India banned it altogether. Uh, so it's a problem. Uh, the uh, SRI in Romania and the cybersecurity office recommended that it be banned in Romania, and the government hasn't done anything on that yet. Uh, so it's, it's very dangerous. And again, that's due to Chinese propaganda, Chinese influence remaining from the communist days in Romania. Similar things come out of Russia. You have Sputnik, you have others. Uh, that propagate uh, a lot of Russia-driven uh, propaganda. And I encourage the security services here to, to shut those things down. And it's a problem not just in Romania. I don't mean to sound like it's just Romania. It's a problem in Eastern Europe. It's a problem in Europe. Uh, the same people have tried to do that in the United States and other areas of the world. It's a major, major problem. And I think to maintain our freedom and democracy, we have to shut those down. And we have to understand that there is absolutely no moral equivalent between communist China, an authoritative, author, authoritarian state like Russia, and a criminal like Putin that kills women, children, what people here may not know that over 800,000 Ukrainian children have been kidnapped from their homes in Ukraine and spread out throughout Russia. Their names have changed uh, uh, so that they cannot be repatriated with their families or in Ukraine. It's, it's beyond the pale, aside from killing uh, women and children indiscriminately bombing schools, hospitals in Ukraine. But this is what Putin does. This is what his criminal regime does. Uh, and it's got to stop. Uh, and people have to say no to that. And the propaganda that comes from Russia has also has to be stopped. Sometimes um, analysts here see the, uh, say that uh, there are different approaches uh, in United States regarding NATO, regarding the geopolitical framework and some, some results, a Republican president could be less interested in NATO and in the conflict in Russia and more interested in what's happening with China and Taiwan. Um, before that, I say our first concern should be our yard. Should we should look at how we should develop Romania because we'll have lots of homework undone before looking at the geopolitical framework. But from my perspective, United States has a constant line regarding uh, both NATO and wh whatever is happening in the world. And from my perspective, the uh, United States will still remain the guardian of the democracy. I, I agree with that. I think there are problems in the United States. And if I may, uh, I'd like to go back uh, three years ago at the end of the Trump administration. The United States economy was the strongest it had ever been in the history of the United States. Unemployment in the United States for all population groups was the lowest it was ever in the United States. I think that its relationship with uh, other countries was the best it ever was uh, in modern history. Since then, 
uh, it's degraded. One of the issues that President Trump advocated was enforcement of the Wales Pledge. The Wales Pledge uh, refers to the 2% of uh, gross domestic product that each member country of NATO pledged to pay, not to the United States, not to anybody else, but to spend on its own military and defense capabilities. There are, of all the NATO countries, there are now, I believe, 32, 33, nine countries that spend that, only nine. Estonia, Latvia, Romania did that until last year. Now it fell below the 2%. So now there are eight countries. Uh, Germany, not even close. France, not even close. Belgium, not even close. Why? And President Trump asked the question, why should the United States uh, fund European defense against Russia because when NATO was set up, it was set up as an organization to protect Europe against Russian aggression. In my opinion, it has failed miserably. It is weak. It is divided. You have Hungary, you have Austria, uh, uh, you have other countries that have not risen to the occasion. Uh, there's discord. The French uh, have uh, created uh, issues within the NATO alliance. Uh, so what are we doing here? President Biden did not recognize that. The Germans, for example, through a completely misguided uh, economic and energy policy, became completely reliant on Russian gas. They shut down their coal mines. They shut down their nuclear programs. They became almost virtually reliant on Russian gas, which encouraged the Russians in their aggression, thinking that the Germans could be blackmailed into uh, acquiescing to whatever they wanted. That wasn't the case, but now the Germans are reopening their coal mines. They're trying to go back to, to nuclear, but it takes time. Uh, energy prices are rising, and the whole green movement, which was one of the excuses for this German-driven uh, uh, energy policy, who's behind it? I think people are starting to look behind it. Who's funding it? Russia, China, many other groups, for example, that support Hamas out of Iran, funded by whom? Russia. China, some by Iran. So it all ties together, and it's all Russian and Chinese propaganda. Indeed. So 2024, uh, a, a year that is still under several circumstances of uh, dangers across the world that could influence things in a bad manner and lots of chances to do things in a good manner for us, for Romania. And I would end this conversation, this very nice conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, being with us. I'm deeply honored. And uh, I would like to ask you in a, an optimistic way of ending this. I managed to attract uh, several young people who studied abroad in very good universities, very good, very educated to, to my team of public affairs consultancy and public affairs solutions. And uh, recently, two of my former colleagues from high school asked me, why didn't you leave Quadrant to, to UK, to United, uh, to USA, to, to France, to study and to work as they did? I said, I, I believed in the, the chances Romania had. I had those chances, but I believed in the chances Romania had. And my question is, do you have a word of encouragement for people, for young people who are now students in high school and the uh, Romanian universities in, regarding their possibilities to develop a career in Romania? Yes, but let me answer it if we have a few moments. I want to come back to that and answer in the following way. 
when the current administration, the Biden administration, came in three years or so ago, and they changed economic and energy policy, when they stopped uh, the exploration for gas and oil, when they limited pipelines, when they limited uh, new refineries, the economy, inflation went through the roof. The economy did not do well, and we are encouraging our enemies. The difference between the period more than three years ago and the last three years is stark, and it's worse than I ever imagined it would be. So I say that because I think things will change after this November. Uh, I think the economy globally will improve once we bring common sense to energy, to economic issues, uh, to military issues, so that people in Romania and young people, I wish them courage and vision and the ability to do what is correct and makes common sense. And what makes common sense to me is a drive for the private sector, merit of the individual, not the state. And again, coming back to the theme of our discussion today, the communist idea is you should sacrifice for the good of the state. That's wrong. The state works for you, for me, for all the other citizens of Romania. And somebody who says anything different should be elected out and driven out and never given another position in government. The government works for the people and people should elect uh, individuals to the government that share those opinions. The others should be thrown out. And coming back to what I said earlier, that's what I believe this year, not just in Romania, but in all the other countries, they have elections. People should ask for change. They should ask for better. They should demand more from their elected officials to do what's right for the people. Each country has its own national interest. It should be respected. Romanians should do what's good for Romania. It's good to be an ally in NATO. It's good to be a member of the European Union, but they're still Romanians. They should do what's right for Romania, advance the Romanian economy and the Romanian policies, not what's good for other countries. You have to find compromises, but they should advance Romanian interests. Same thing in the US, same thing everywhere else. So I think if they follow young people, if they have the courage to do what's right, and what makes common sense, Romania will be a great country. Thank you so much, Ambassador Zuckerman. You gave us a vision for what we can do more, how we can believe in us more, and how we can understand what's happening around us more. Thank you very much. My pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you.